welcome to our live stream. Uh, we hope you enjoy the service and we hope you have a blessed week as well. There where you are at, Encounter Church, why don't you praise God with us this morning as he is a lion of the lamb. Because he is worthy.
Good morning, everyone. I am so blessed to be here today and thankful for being able to partake in today's giving. Due to the circumstances around us today, I hope and I pray that everyone that is connected with us this morning, that you and your families are well and beyond blessed. As we all get ready to give our tithes and offerings, let's get comfortable in our homes, lift up your hands, and let's continue to worship the Lord. Even though we're not able to gather in large groups, we are still able to worship the Lord no matter where we're, we are at. That is one thing that will never be taken away from us is the freedom to worship. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us life and for helping us to live that life wisely, for giving us your written word. Thank you for putting love in our hearts so that we are able to share with all those around us. Thank you for all of creation and its beauty that surrounds us. Thank you for being our provider, for allowing us to put our lives in your hands. Thank you for opening our hearts so that we may know you better every day. Thank you, Lord, for your grace given to us just for believing. Lord, we offer these gifts to you with, thanks, with thankful hearts. As we give our offerings and tithing, together in agreement, we declare that you are able to make all favor and blessings come to everyone in abundance. Lord, we call upon jobs opportunities for those that need jobs, promotions, investment opportunities, and other means of finance increase so that we can give more to advance your kingdom. Grant us wisdom and understanding when it comes to financial stewardship. Lord, May this offering extend the work of your kingdom in your church, your community, and in today's beautiful world, which you have made. In Jesus' name, amen. Encounter Church. I pray that you are all doing well and that you all had a great week this week. It's good to be able to bring the word again to you all through our live recording. This is such a blessing for us all. I want to take this time though and I want to say a prayer. I want to pray that God be with us today this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, this morning. Father God, we thank you for everything that you are doing in our lives, God. For everything that, God, you are continuing to, to do, Lord, through, through this time that we're, we are going through, Lord. We know that, God, you have not left us. We know that, God, your power and your spirit is with us and it guides us, Lord, every day, Lord. 
We thank you for this ability to be able, God, to continue to speak your word through, through live recordings, Lord. And I pray for every heart and mind that are at home right now watching this. I pray that they are opened and that they're willing to receive, God, what you have for them today. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Put your trust in the Lord God, and you will stand your ground. What words to be able to say right now, huh? Through what we're going through with this virus. Sometimes it's hard to put our trust in the Lord and to stand our ground. But there's a story in the Bible about a king who did just that. His name is King Jehoshaphat. It's found in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1 through 30. It's a story about a king that was going to be conquered by three different armies. But it will also, it's a story about how he stood his ground after a prophet had spoken over him, after God confirmed through a prophet for him to trust in God. You know, sometimes we focus our problems instead of trusting God. And when we do that, we end up so exhausted. And you're going to be defeated because God designed us to fight our battles not by ourselves. Because we don't have the power that we need to face every problem in our own strength. That's why we need God's power. That's why we need to trust in God. You can't focus your problems and focus on God at the same time. You've got to shift your focus to God and what he has promised to do. Verse 5 in 2 Chronicles of chapter 20 says, Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord. He prayed, O Lord God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are the ruler of all kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. And if we go down to verse 8, it says, Your people settled here and built this temple to honor your name. They said, Whenever we are faced with any calamity such as war plague or famine we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored we can cry out to you save us and you will hear us and rescue us in verse 14 it says the spirit of the lord came upon one of the men standing there his name was Je Haziel, son of Zechariah, son of Benaiah, son of Jeel, son of Mantai, Mantania, a Levite who was a descendant of Asap. And this is where it gets good. He said, listen, all people of Judah and Jerusalem. He even said, King Jos he even made sure that King Jehoshaphat listened. And he tells them, this is what the Lord says, do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but it's God's. See, what happens is many times the battle, we tend to take it in our own self. Where I said earlier, we weren't designed to handle this by ourselves. This is why God is in the picture. This is what the prophet is telling them, that the battle wasn't Jehoshaphat's. The battle was God's. And if we read down to verse 20, it says, Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in the prophets, and you will succeed. 
See, many times life is full of experiences that test and drain us and wipe us out. When we are worn out, that's when we're ready to say to God, I'm sorry. See, many times we take the situation into our own hands. And we, tr- we tend to deal with it. And we always put it before God. Sometimes we even move God out of the way. And we focus so much on this problem. But there comes a time where we come to a point and we say, God, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I can't handle the situation. I've tried everything. I need to give it to you because it's bigger than me. So what should we do when you are overwhelmed? We stand strong. Jehoshaphat, don't you think that he was overwhelmed with the news that he got? That there were three armies that wanted to fight him and conquer him. At the beginning of of the chapter, it reads that he was terrified. But then from there on, it shows his courage. It shows how he trusted in God. It shows in whom he had believed in. And nowhere else does it show that he feared But God even brought a prophet to confirm every word. Standing strong is an attitude of quiet confidence in the character of God. You will be successful when you put your trust in what he says through his word and through his Holy Spirit. When we trust in them. When you get with God, you'll never have to give ground because you are standing strong. Jehoshaphat never gave up. It's funny because they say that he was the man who won a war without fighting. And when you read the story, that's exactly what happened. He won this war because he trusted in God because he didn't have to lift a weapon. He didn't have to send soldiers out. God had everything because he stood strong. But sometimes when the burden is overwhelming, you may be tempted to cave in under the pressure. God doesn't want you to back down from a difficult situation. Don't you think this was a difficult situation for Jehoshaphat? Yes, I believe it was. But he didn't back down. Because his trust and his love for God was too great. God doesn't want you to back from, down from a situation. He doesn't want you to sacrifice your integrity. God wants you to trust him through the challenges. But not only trust him, but to learn from them. Because when the moment we begin to run from them, we will miss out learning what God has for us through that time. And then we'll have to probably repeat that lesson again. And sometimes it's always twice as hard when it comes around the second time. God is committed to your success. But you need to focus on Him the way Jehoshaphat did. And trust Him. His word. And trust that God will always hold you firm. See, Jehoshaphat knew that he would succeed because God proved it and showed him. And if we go down to verse 29, this is the awesome part of this story. When all the surrounding kingdoms heard that the Lord himself had fought against the enemies of Israel, the fear of God came over them. So Jehoshaphat's kingdom was at peace for his God had given him rest on every side see when we give our total trust to God during what we're learning when we're going through the situation when we're going through the problems what this coronavirus is trying to do to the to the people to the children of God if we trust in God God will see us through And sometimes it makes us think that we are isolated. That's the worst thing we can do is get isolated. That's what the enemy uses. 
But here, Jehoshaphat, it says that God gave him peace after the victory. And that's what God's going to do when all of this is said and done. With all this chaos that is going on in the world, God is going to give victory. He's going to give victory because the way He promised it to Jehoshaphat, He promises it to us. And in closing, I want to share a verse with you from the message version. It's Proverbs 3, chapter 3, verse 5 through 7. And it reads like this. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything that you do. Everywhere you go, He's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Jehoshaphat didn't know it all, but he trusted in God. Just like I ask every one of you today from our church family, whatever you may be going through, whatever you are feeling right now, God didn't design you to go through it alone. Search for Him. Reach out to Him. Call out to Him. And you'll see how God will respond when you begin to put your trust and your confidence in Him. God does not hold back. Just like He didn't hold back with King Jehoshaphat, He gave him the victory, the triumph. God is going to give it to you, my brother, my sister. But hold on. In the name of Jesus, God bless you all. Amen.